My guest is the fabulous Neil Tyson. When we come back, I'm going to talk about life and death and what he thinks, what he believes, what he has faith in after this. As the interview proceeds, I found this incredibly enlightening. You encounter a, a very vulnerable Larry King, an honest Larry King, a Larry King who fears dying, fears death by his own admission. A Larry King, by his own admission, uh, fears not existing at some point in the future. He really wants to live forever. Wow. Wow. I mean, the gospel of Jesus Christ has a lot to say about that. Uh, but unfortunately, Larry, here in this interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's drawing from the wrong well. He's drawing from the well uh, of this age, the spirit of this age, uh, a man of the world, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he's not going to give him the answers. Um, that Jesus Christ would would give him. The scientists, bring it on. Bring it on. on. You accept facts, facts and belief. I know the religious people believe. The scientist says prove. What do you believe? What do you think happens when we die? Well, so I I, I can make some unassailable statements about what happens when you die. Put me in the ground. Let the worms, microbes, come in and out of my body. And the energy content of my body that I had assembled over my lifetime, consuming the flora and fauna of this earth, my body then returns to them. And thus is the cycle of life. I know that's going to happen, because you can measure where the energy goes. And that's how I want to go out. But you're not conscious, and that's for eternity, right? Uh, yeah, that there's no evidence that I have any consciousness of anything. And by the way, is that so weird? Did you have consciousness before you were born? Were you saying, how come I'm not on Earth? My gosh, I need to be on Earth. Or how come, where am I? No, you, there's just the state of non-existence. Oh. And so I'm not given any yeah, reason. Yeah, but now I am born. Okay. And I can't stand the thought of non-existence. See, I already have existence. I don't, I accept Okay, it, th it is true. We fear death because we are born knowing only life. Right. I get that. However, I, I, I t take another view because I've been asked, if you could live forever, would you? Yes. <laughs> okay. We're well, done on the interview. The sentence. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, okay, sure. That's an attractive idea. Living forever is an attractive idea? It's a lot more than that, Neil. It's the pearl of great price. It's a man who finds a treasure uh, in a field. He has to cover it up, goes back to his house, sells all his goods and possessions, and then just to go buy back that field. It's an everlasting inheritance in the kingdom of God. It's immortality and never dying again. That's what it is. If we live forever, why ever even get out of bed in the morning? Because you always have tomorrow. That's not the kind of life I want to lead. But why, don't you fear not being around? What do you my think, species. What do you think when you see religious people, when you see popes or rabbis or people who fervently believe, the Billy Grahams mm -hmm. of the world, who are sincere and wonderful people? Yeah, of course. Who actually maybe delusional that they're going somewhere? No, they're, they're, they're embedded in belief systems. And what I look at is I see all the belief systems, and when you line them up, they're not really compatible with one another. So whatever they're believing, it can't be a truth that applies to everybody because other people believe what they do with no less fervor. And so I sit back, and as a person who's interested in, ob in objective truths, and I say, well, it doesn't look like that's a path towards an objective truth. I'm sorry, Neil, but Christianity is true, and all other competing religions are false. You, you see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is true. Jesus Christ abolishing death and bringing life and immortality to light through the gospel is true. I'd really like to see you try to disprove uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in closing, you'll say that you find the universe amazing, and no doubt you spent your entire adult life studying it from a scientific perspective. But in the process, you fail to grasp 
who created the universe and who the universe is for. It's for Jesus Christ. I find this interview incredibly sad because, because here we have Larry King, one of the most decorated journalists of our day, who is seeking answers. Um, he's seeking hope. He, he wants to live forever. But the source, who he's asking, is completely and utterly disavowing him of any kind of hope. Neil deGrasse Tyson, you can't give Larry King any hope because you don't have hope yourself in the one who created the universe, Jesus Christ. And you are an amazing man. No, the universe is amazing. I'm just revealing that fact. <laughs>